Greetings people of the world, it's Rabbit here for Unbreakable Gamers. Um, today I'm just doing a quick and dirty uh, tutorial on how to basically get Smedit um, StarMade Editor um, installed and working in StarMade. Um, this program is used for uh, designing and editing ships outside of StarMade and space stations, although I recommend only using it uh, for basic hulls um, due to the current state that it is in. Um, first of all, you want to make a get a folder. Uh, you want to do a clean install of StarMade to this. So what you do is you make a folder, um, and you want to put your StarMade starter.exe in it. As you can see, um, I'm not using the Steam version. I'm just using the um, general uh, version of StarMade. Uh, if you don't, if you only have the Steam version, I suggest downloading the installer from the official StarMade site. Uh, yeah, dump your StarMade starter.exe here. Fire it up. Um, and then do update and install the latest version, let it install, you'll then have a clean install. Um, where, then you need to get the Smedit download, which is Smedit, um, contains a Smedit.jar folder, a file, and you then put it into the main folder here, where you, your server, config, all that sort of thing is, and as you can see right there under settings, uh, config, Smedit.jar. Okay. So once you've got that in there, and I, again, I cannot stress enough, get a clean install. I just did an update. Um, the program hasn't been updated in about a year. Uh, I just got the latest update. I was using an older version of StarMade and an older version of Smedit. Um, I just copied the file over like this. I um, overwrote the old Smedit that was there, updated the StarMade, loaded it up, and there was nothing but problems. The, the paint palettes and things that you'll see um, weren't working. Anyway. Get, make sure your Smedit is in this folder. It has to be in this folder, nowhere else. You double click it to start it. Now, as you can see, you get this little pop-up show up here. Now, what you want to do is you want to set your memory settings there. Um, I suggest the bigger the ship you're going to make, the more memory you give it. This program is more resource intensity, intensive Sound muted. than... Um, StarMade is, which is saying something. You know, I mean, StarMade is a pretty uh, resource-intensive program as it is. Uh, so yeah, set your memory to there. I, um, I have eight gigabytes, so I vary between four to six gigabytes, depending on the sort of performance and things I'm getting. Um, textures, whatever, you know, irregardless. But this here has to point to the folder that Smedit is in, which is over here, StarMade. Uh, where the StarMade dot jar and Smedit jar is. So you need that folder directory. Pointing to, you need that um, directory settings there, pointing to the folder that has smedit.jar. Now before starting the program, you need to click apply, or otherwise those settings don't take. Um, now obviously, to use anything over a gigabyte with Java, you need 64-bit Java, as well as you need to have a 64-bit operating system. Um, I'm not going to go into that, you can Google that up on how to get a 64-bit Java and check if your Windows is 64-bit and whether you have enough memory and such. Um, but yeah, I recommend a program like this having at least 8 gigabytes and assigning at least 4 gigabytes to this program. Uh, then you click Start Smedit. And if you've done everything right, this is what will pop up. Yeah, it'll start off with this default ship there. Now, as you can see, that moves around fairly, fairly quickly. Now, the thing is, you have all these import options here, bin box, things like that. Um, I'll show you how to import an uh, object file or a .obj file. Um, I'm not going to worry about these ones here. Again, um, you can get on Google, you can look up tutorials on YouTube. Even the old ones will work, even though the interface now is slightly different. Um, but essentially, yeah, you'll go uh, import, click object. Um, I've already got an object file here, but yeah, you'll browse to your files and then click open. Um, here you set the dimension of the longest um, axis. So say you've got a, uh, a star destroyer and you want that star destroyer to be 500 meters long, then you type that in. It'll do the wide, longest dimension. So if your ship's wider than it is longer, that will actually set the width of the ship. Once you've got that done, you click Okay, now I'm going with 200 megabytes now. If you watch up here, that small ship, see 57 megabytes of four and a half gig, even though I've assigned five gig to it, um, a, a gigabyte isn't actually 1,000 megabytes exactly. But yeah, click OK, 
and it'll do its thing. Now, 200 meter ship, not so bad. You'll see as it loads up, the memory increases. A few hundred megabytes, it's not that bad. But now you'll see it's like a slideshow compared to how that other ship was um, spinning around. I find things can get pretty bad once you get to uh, like a 500 meter um, ship, one kilometer, and you'll be better prepared to be really slow, have crashes, and all sorts of things. Um, but that's essentially how you'll get it up and running and importing a model. Now, you have all these options like decks will automatically generate decks with ramps and things on the ship. Um, and hollow, um, these can work good, but they're also problematic in the fact that, like with hollow for example, hollow will, a lot of models if you download them will have a lot of junk on the interior. You know, the model maker might just you know, put, use a bunch of cubes to get a shape on a ship and then not clean up the stuff on the inside. Um, and hollow removes all those, so you've just got like a single layer hole. Um, instead of having three or four blocks thick because of other shapes and things inside. Um, next is that if a model you use has a hole in it, the program doesn't know because of the hole whether the interior is the interior and the outside is the outside. It basically considers it gets confused when it gets to that hole because it sort of scans for, you know, down, the, down the line, hollowing out and then and doing calculations. It takes some time. And what will happen is you will get your memory up here just increasing and increasing and increasing. As you can see, it's already up to 300 megabytes. This program is really bad at memory optimization. So sometimes it'll drop back down, other times it'll go up. Um, I'll give you a quick look now. We've got save as a blueprint. If you click that, you'll get an option. You give the name, uh, blueprint a name, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you use the default blueprint there, it'll be the blueprint that the program loads up instead of that fighter that we saw earlier. So yeah, you just um, click save as, blueprint, give it a name, click OK, and it'll save it to your um, regular blueprint folder. As you can see, I've done one already um, there. Uh, and then once you've got your blueprint, you need to um, start up StarMate. Um, obviously. Um, again, you want to load up the star made that you've got uh, Smedic installed into because that's where the blueprint will be. You can copy it out later on to any other copy. I've got st uh, two um, copies of regular star made and uh, a third um, Steam version for various editing reasons and other stuff. Uh, yeah, start up the game. Um, while we're quickly here, I'll show you another thing. Um, actually, we'll go back. Important thing with StarMate, a lot of people don't realise as well. Same thing, um, if you have X amount of memory, you go here, memory settings, and you set it to whatever computer, uh, like this is what I use for 8 gigabytes. I find it works rather well. Um, I probably wouldn't go over half of your memory, um, but to get the defaults up, you do need 64 bit Windows and 64 bit Java. Um, so yeah, start the game up. <coughs> uh, off to single player we go. Because there's, there's one more thing that you really need to know when uh, importing your blueprints. Just bear with me here. Oh well, bear with the game. Now, I've already spawned the model in, as you can see. What you need to do is, um, if you look, these are old blueprints, you don't have the scorecard here anymore. Uh, I mean, if we look here, this is the model that I've just had loaded up in Smetit. You can see there's no scorecard here. Uh, what we need to do now is, in game, Jump in a build block or something, and save it again. Uh, and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, we've saved that. Now if you see here, no scorecard. If you see here, now it's a scorecard because Smedit still exports to the old blueprint format. Now the reason you want to do this is, if your blueprint's using the old format, 
you can have some really bad problems. I've had a ship that was on the old blueprint format in the current version of the game. I was flying along, the ship just stopped. It just died on me. And what happened was the system had shut down as if, I, if the ship had been taken damage. Um, uh, where if you see, uh, press Y, normally you get the reboot options and things like this. Um, with the old blueprint, and when it shut down, it was actually coming up with a 21 year, I kid you not, several thousands of days, 21 years before the ship would reboot. It essentially becomes dead in the water. So you need to make sure you update that blueprint. Now, other things to keep in mind as well is I would not recommend um, using Smedit uh, if you've got low memory amounts. Uh, I wouldn't suggest using it for bigger ships or stations if you've got low memory amounts. Um, again, I'll give you a quick demonstration of why. I mean, um, as you saw that small ship, it spun around really quick. Um, um, oops, excuse me, turns on there, I'll just end it. Um, yeah, so you got the ship here, it spins around really quick. As you saw the other model, it started slowing down, that was 200 metres. Now, if I go here, and I increase it to say, uh, we'll bring in a big ship, um, of a thousand meters, let's say I've got an infinity here uh, from Halo. Uh, I've got that there because make it we'll say to make it a thousand meters. Now, as you saw, I've got almost five gig of memory dedicated there. It can load up fairly quickly. Sometimes not, but if you see, yeah, memory is already increasing because I've now got a much bigger ship. Now, as you can see, I'm moving the mouse here. And it takes a while, and it is so easy to um, not be able to align things up and make it make positioning incredibly hard. Um, same thing. Um, so yeah, you've got to be aware of that. Actually, today it's behaving itself. But the more complicated the ship, like this, is a fairly cylindrical, straightforward shape. Um, if, for example, I loaded up a ship with more um, detailing. It was a bit more complicated um, design, and you'll see now that the menus start slowing down and things. Uh, let's go. Uh, not the mouth on. Um, need one of the design was the Triton. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, something like um, this fan-made ship here, Triton. That should uh, another Halo ship. Oh. Obviously, I've got a uh, soft spot for Halo. As you can see, it's already taking a long time to render it. And if you see now, it's the same length as the Infinity, but it's really going to start chewing up the resources as it loads in. Uh, I'm using Windows 10 64-bit. Um, I've found it does with this program seem to be better at handling the memory man management. When I was on Windows 8, it used to consume memory uh, a lot worse. It rarely come back down. But yeah, as you can see, it's basically stalled. It's taking uh, its time. And when it does load, the memory will shoot up. It'll be about one and a half gigs. You try and use modify hollow or anything like that and there's a hole in the model it'll just keep chewing up the memory till it crashes so these are things that you need to be aware of but yeah anyway i hope this helps out some people with um getting their smet at working and this tutorial has been some benefit uh if you have any questions then by all means feel free to leave a comment in the um, section below or message me on the forum um, starmate forums and i'll be happy to help you out if i can cheers